Hey, John. Um, you know, given obviously all the news today, um, I guess just, just just your thoughts on, you know, uh, the trade and, and just how your team responded you know, today afterward on the ice. Well, I, I talked to the two players, Lani and uh, Roger Pick, and they uh, it's just they're really excited. So uh, uh, I'd like to get them here as quickly as possible. Um, we're thrilled. Uh, I, I'm really anxious to to work with them. And uh, I was just sitting in the office trying to figure out lines. Um, yeah, so we're very excited about what happened today, and uh, you know, more importantly, right now, I I just really like the structure of our game tonight. We've been we've been a team just lacking that structure in the middle of the ice in the neutral zone. We focused on it with the video. We it's it's been a big part of our meetings prior to the game. Uh, I thought we were much more uh, concentrated on that part of the game. Did, did the situation that you had there before the trade, did that play into that at all, do you think? I mean, did you guys need to get by that situation as fast what situ as possible? What, what situation? With, with uh, Pierre-Luc and not wanting to be here and, and that whole thing. Uh, I, 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 I'm, like I said yesterday, uh, I am, I'm coaching the hockey team and who's on our bench. Uh, uh, we're going to coach them. And if, if, if there were some struggles and continued struggles, certain things happen and it could happen to anybody. So that uh, right on through. Uh, and, and I said, yeah, I know you guys have to ask the questions. I don't concern myself with it. I just, I'm trying to coach the hockey team to be at the best it can be. And I'm not worried about any one particular individual. Did you speak with Pierre Luke before he left or no? No. Okay. Okay. Next we go to Aaron Portsline. Go ahead, Aaron. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, John. You, we've talked in the past uh, about this team and, and how hard it is at times for this team to score goals. You acquired today a player who is one of the singular goal scorers in this league uh, of his generation. How much just does having that in your arsenal now can change the feel of this club? Obviously, it's not all on him, but you've got a guy that can score out of nowhere a bit now. Yeah, it, it's obviously... Um, he, he, he can score and, and talking to Yarmo, Yarmo knows him pretty well. And I always talk to Yarmo about the players that Yarmo says he can pass the puck too. He, he's a really good playmaker. And I watched some of his, of the highlights of their, of his last game. He's been nicked up a little bit. Uh, big part of their win in Winnipeg. Yeah. I talked to him on the phone. Yeah. He, he is, uh, is really good, really good conversation. Uh, we just need to, not sure what all it tells as far as getting them here and getting them on the ice with the protocol and visa and all that. But we're really excited about both of them coming, Jack and him. And, uh, and just the excitement that they have is really encouraging for us. You've talked in the past about Yarmo and his strengths as, as a talent evaluator. He was in a situation where I think everybody knew he had to make a deal. Yeah. He comes out with this package coming back to uh, would it would appear pretty useful parts for you. Just your thoughts on what he was able to turn from a, a pretty bad situation that needed to be dealt with to, to get this out of it. Yeah. I, I think he's very good at it. Uh, um, I, I don't think he's afraid, you know, bringing in bread and, and all that stuff. And uh, uh, he, he, yeah, he, he is, uh, uh, you know, he got put in a hell of a spot. It was a hell of a spot he got put into here, and uh, that that's that's what bothers me the most, the spot that he was put in. He stood right in there, and uh, uh, I, I talked to him a couple of times yesterday, the amount of time he was putting into things. Yeah, so we're very happy that uh, uh, he found this, found the way here, him and Chevy, and uh, we're really excited about uh, uh, these guys coming to us. You're almost not afraid of... of of trying to make his team better and and uh, putting his neck out there a little bit at times. So I, I think that's a really good trade of his. Is there a sense today in playing this game that you've got your team back? In other words, that it's all about the right things now? Well, uh, you know, I think it was an important game in where w yesterday's workday was based on structure. And uh, um, 
and we showed it. It, 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 it video, the, the two meetings today was basically on some patience in our game and structure. Um, as I said to you prior, you got to be really careful with the language you use when you're trying to maybe go down the other road, trying to get a little offense. Uh, you know, we're just, we were just too wide open. Uh, we really didn't have any concentration away from the puck. And that's what I'm encouraged about this. And you end up getting a result. I, I, I think it's always important for the players, especially to get a result. Coaches, sometimes you don't get the total result, but then you see some of the play and you're happy about some of the things. But players want results. So I, I think that'll double it up for us in, in how we handle ourselves away from the puck. And, um, yeah, so hopefully we, we just need to gain some traction. Uh, we, we can't give up the chances we've been given, and we need to gain some traction in that part of the game. Then we can explore some other stuff along the way. Thanks. Morning, Paul. Uh, what are you getting, and what are you giving up in the steal? Uh, we're giving up an elite shooter that I, I firmly believe is going to develop into a, uh, a strong, very powerful power forward. And then we're going to get a power forward that I think is going to develop into a, an elite point producer. So different starting points. They'll both get to, in my mind, at the end of their career, the same place. They're both going to be big, powerful men that will drive play and, and drive offense. We'll go next to Scott Billick. Go ahead, Scott. Hi, good morning, Paul. Um, I, I guess, and ask uh, Kevin this as well, I'm just wondering, um, from your perspective and having coached uh, Patrick now for, well, I guess five years or four and a half, four and a little bit, what is your take on, I suppose, what didn't work out for Patrick here? I'm not sure a whole lot. Like he, he came in and, and, and showed that he could score at an elite level and played with good players and did that. Um, the opportunity going down the road, going forward at the time are, you know, our, our driver, our number one center, and, and Patrick, the hockey that they played together last year, it wasn't a natural fit for them. Um, that that might be it when he looked at, you know, where he would end up, who he would play with. But he was given a real good opportunity to score goals and, and be on a real dominant power play, and he took full advantage of that. He also you know, developed into a guy that was playing as most of these kids come in, they play in the three hole and, and God produced a ton of goals for us, played well in that hole. And as he developed up, you know, we, I don't know what his final numbers were. He was minus 26 a couple of years ago as he fed further up our lineup. And then he made a jump to being a plus player. So he, uh, he certainly developed. He was a, a shooter only early on in his career, got stronger and stronger. And I think when you just even the glimpse of training camp that we got at him in game one, uh, that he played before he got hurt. He, he's he's not far off from being that big, powerful man that can do both score goals and and control play. Go next to uh, Ted Wyman from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Ted. Hey, Paul. Uh, Nick Ehlers was on here, and he was very clearly very emotional. Blake seemed pretty emotional too. I imagine a lot of the team are. Um, how do you sort of get them refocused here when you've got big games tonight and tomorrow? Well, it's always tough when you've, when you've got a guy leaving your room, uh, trades on game days. I look for, for signs of it, didn't see it in the, you know, so this happened prior to the morning skate. So the morning skate happens. They were, they were sharp. I think, um, I think we'll be right tonight. I, I think our energy is going to be good. This is a big, you know, it's a, it's a big name going out and a big name coming in. So there's an energy level just that comes with that. And I think you'll see it on the ice. And we'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Morning, Paul. Uh, I suppose this is in the category of really good problems to have, but uh, what do you do in the short term once Pierre-Luc is, is through quarantine? What do you do with Paul Stasny? And, and uh, Kevin mentioned potentially moving him to the wing. Is that something you've talked to him about? And how do you maybe see it all shaking out? Yeah, so that we'll, well, before the final decision is made, you, you know when you've got a gap, you got to wait to see who's left playing, um, you know, injuries before I can tell you what the lineup's going to look like. That is an option, Paul, going to the wing. We have talked about it, but we had talked about it maybe briefly before. Whenever a player comes in, I kind of ask them, those, those are standard 
intake questions, especially centermen. If you ever move to the wing, are you more comfortable on the left and the right? I can't I very probably have that conversation. Did have that conversation with him today. He uh, he's got a high comfort level with it, so that is an option for us. We'll go next to Paul Friesen from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Paul. Paul, oh, when that high a draft pick as Patrick and that kind of talent wants out, it has to be seen as a failure on some level. How much of that do you accept? I would say all of it would be on me. I mean, that's the environment you're trying to create for each player is for them to feel like they have the opportunity to be at their best. Um, and that's the function of, of my job, whether you can get it to that. I mean, I, I think I would suggest to you that when Patrick came in and worked as hard as he did this year, uh, we were kind of constantly trying to work on that, right? Trying to constantly get to the point that Patrick uh, appreciated who he was playing with and the opportunity that he was given um, and felt we had we had made great strides in that coming into this year. It's the head coach's responsibility. So we'll, I'll take all of that, but I'll make sure that I would take then the responsibility for some of these other young players who are developing incredibly well and having great success here. We'll go next to Sarah Lesky from TSN. Go ahead, Sarah. Well, my understanding is that Patrick was here maybe when the trade went down in the building. Did you have the opportunity to speak to him uh, at all since it's happened? Yeah, I did. Uh, before we went on the ice, the, the trade was done. The trade call was made. So Patrick and Patrick didn't, I mean, he was, he was here until just recently. He spent quite a bit of time here and talked to everybody. So it was a, it was good. You, you, you want to make sure, um, that you get a chance to say your goodbyes and to the well wishes. So we had, we had a nice, we had a real good chat and I, and I enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the opportunity for sure. Go next to Jeff Hamilton. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey Paul, it wasn't exactly a quiet exit for uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois from, from um, Columbus. And I'm, I'm curious for an organization that prides itself on, on character when you see a player who seemingly had some evidence that he gave up on his teammates, if you're expecting yeah. to, if you're wondering what exactly you're inheriting. Yeah, so I wouldn't attach myself to any of the words that you just said. I, um, I don't know what, what went on there. I mean, I know you, you get the camera on them and you decide what you see. None of us were a part of what went on there. You have no idea what went on in the background. So I'd be careful with my character assassinations before I get to meet the man. He'll walk in here. He'll present himself. We'll accept him with open arms as we always do with new players. And we'll judge him by uh, how he becomes a Winnipeg Jet. We'll go next to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. So, Paul, you talked about that balance of, you know, finding opportunity for all the different players that you have in your lineup. And was this an inevitable outcome uh, with Patrick? And do you maybe have any regrets? Are there any moments you look back and think, maybe if I would have handled that a little bit differently, there could have been a different outcome? I think if you have a not long enough relationship with any player, your wife, whatever, there are always moments, uh, your family that you would look back and say, maybe if I had handled this situation a little bit differently, we could have a slightly different outcome. Um, but at the end of the day for Patrick, he was getting better. You know, he was, he was a better player last year than the year prior. I know the goals are how you judge a man, but I, I think he was getting better each and every year. It wasn't always easy. Um, but, you know, he was committed to getting better and, and we were committed to helping him along that process. And, and I believe that happened. We'll go next to Marat Tash from The Athletic. Go ahead, Marat. Hi, Paul. Uh, as you say, Patrick Laine was getting better as a player and you've, you've seen his development on the ice. Uh, so... To what degree would his desire to leave have been interpersonal? I don't know the answer to that because I, I wasn't driving that uh, the idea that, that Patrick's opportunity wasn't here. I think his opportunity that he had an opportunity here and I thought it was a good one. I liked the players that he had a chance to play with. Um, his comfort level in the room seems to have grown, but I, I can't give you a degree number on that. 
We'll go next to Kelly Moore from CJOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Well, I'm going to be uh, kind of boring here, Coach, and just ask you about the game tonight because uh, uh, you are playing, and it is the third and final one on a chance to sweep. Uh, uh, maybe just look ahead. Uh, are you expecting Ottawa to uh, play with a burr up their saddle uh, at the start like they did at the finish? And, uh, yeah, and, and what are you guys preparing for that? Well, thank you for the question, Kelly, first of all. Um, I would expect that there's going to be some of it right? So they'll bring an energy to the game tonight, be having lost two, but they're also the end goal is to win. So I would expect that energy to be very, very high early in the game, but you, you're probably not winning a hockey game if you spend an awful lot of time in the penalty box to do it. So there'll be a game played. So I think both teams come with a lot of energy. We liked our second game. They liked their first game. We're both going to try to you know reestablish that style of play that we had. I do think it'll be, it'll be physical. They got to, They've, I don't know if they've got necessarily that much younger of a team than we will put on the ice here tonight, but they've got some young players that they're trying to mold and shape, and they want to have an anger to their game. When you lose two in a row like they have, you want to make sure uh, that you're coming with, with the right intensity in the game. So we, our expectation, we, they will be at their best at the start of this game. We'll go next to Brian Munns from TSN 1290. Go ahead, Munsey. Paul, do you have a lasting impression or one that really stands out for Patrick? Like, would it be the five goal night? Would it be the trip to Finland? Would it be game one here or something else that, uh, that pops to the top of your mind? I, I think it's, it's more of a general feeling from the bench when he would score one of those goals where the puck would come off his stick. So absolutely hot. You couldn't really describe it. Right. And there would be a, I don't know if an awe is the right word. Obviously, as he scores, there's a celebration, but there's always, always an awareness that, that man, that kid shoots the puck like nobody's business. And and I, I think one of my favorites was we had a, I won't mention his name, but we had a, a third goalie come in for practice and uh, because Helly was taking the day off and, and Patty lit one up. And uh, the goalie was in the net giving it to himself because he didn't stop it. So he had to slide down and say, listen, kid, nobody's stopping that don't be so hard on yourself but man he was hoping to stop patty that day and i don't know that connor hellebuck gets his glove on that one but that was one of my favorites go next to jean francois chamont go ahead jean francois thank you gregor um paul i'm just curious to know you're not coaching directly with his dad with with eric dubois but you know him pretty well He's coaching the moves. What's the ins insight you can get from his father, knowing his personality, knowing the type of player you're going to get with Pierre de Dubois? Well, I mean, quite a bit um, in that, that that's a, a real good So You know, these young guys have different drivers, right? There's different personality uh, that, 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 that you get an insight. So he and Pascal Vincent, you know, would, would talk a lot of hockey and talk a lot of hockey with Pierre Luc. So over the years, you know, we, we, How's your kid doing? How, you know, how are things going? Watch him play. You know, you're a little more connected to Pierre Luc because of, of Eric. When you're watching the Blue Jackets play, you'd always follow him. So you got kind of this insight into the young man. Um, and then he's a dad, right? So we got two of them on staff now connected to their players. So I don't, I don't ever talk to Dave about Adam and I won't talk to Eric about Pierre Luc. But uh, prior to him getting here, I'm sure he's going to be mom and dad are pretty darn excited. Just time for a couple more. Let's go to uh, Jason Bell from the Free Press. Go ahead, Jason. Paul, thanks for doing this. Um, you know, we, I don't know if we really did address uh, Jack Rosovic, who is, is obviously Columbus would consider him a very key. So this is the first question. First question this year on him for me. Thank you. <laughs> well, and you know, Paul, um, I, I, I don't think you've called out players very often since you've been here, yeah. but I think we'll call a few times where would being hard on Jack through the media maybe have snuck out a few times. And I just wondered probably because you, you, you cared for the kid and you, you felt like there was a real player in there. And I wonder yeah. how you think he'll handle the situation in Columbus at home for him and, and what you see out of, of a guy like Jack Rock. Yeah, Rock. he'll be fine there. I mean, I, there's one, there was the one in San Jose, right? Where the other setup or scored the game winning goal after having a really tough night, but that was true of our whole team. I think that was the, Hellebuck 52 save performance night. Um, Jack's going to be really good there. He is. He's, he's, they've got a different structure than we do, right? They're, they're center ice. They've got more room at center ice. When Jack gets here, we've got, you know, Mark and, 
and Brian and Adam ahead of him. And then that's the position he wanted to play. Um, wasn't particularly interested in playing on the fourth line. So he, he gets to the third line wing and he learns the game with Lowry and Cop last year. That's going to serve him well, but he skates well. He can handle the puck. He can make plays, got good visions, got it in great shape. I think playing at home will be real, real good for him. Uh, so I, I think this is a, you know what, at the end of the day, in, in a really unusual set of circumstances between Columbus and Winnipeg, this is going to work out for both teams and for all players involved. And final question, uh, Ken Weeb from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Ken. Well, just going back to the game tonight, uh, you hinted at it yesterday, but what was the determining factor on the back end? And given the style that you would expect tomorrow, would you look to get Billy back in tomorrow perhaps? Yeah, that's, that's a possibility because Billy doesn't come out on a lack of performance. We liked his game. Liked his game. Uh, probably stronger than any of the games that he played last year, which is exciting because he is faster and he is stronger. I think he mentioned that before the game. He felt it and we saw it. Uh, lots of composure with the puck. There's lots of NHL hockey games for Billy to play in. But I don't, I mean, I, I'm really pleased where Logan Stanley's at. And, and you, you, sometimes these young guys, once the, what they're lacking is a little bit of NHL confidence. They're not sure if they can play. And Logan, on a daily basis now, not just the game, so that in practice is starting to show a little bit more of, of the uh, the asset base that he has and a big man that moves. So, Billy was was a good player for us and came out of the lineup and uh, he, he's got going to get an opportunity to get back in.